locked down in the office and I've got the whole building to myself, so naturally on my coffee breaks I start thinking about retro bikes. Specifically today, the technology of the 1980s. Now this rather lovely rally has actually got a really interesting backstory. Um, first of all, it is actually mainly a butcher's dustbin of bits from the early 90s, not the 80s. However, for the theme of today's video, we're going to talk about two pieces of very early mountain bike technology that did date back to the 80s, both of which are going to be in use on this lovely bike. Um, for those of you with an eagle eye, I have featured this bike on this channel before. Um, the frame was originally a Rally Yukon that I rescued from landfill. Um, and then the rest of it is stuff that I accumulated from various bike jumbles and of course my own workshop with a smattering of really special stuff from my childhood. So while the frame is a fairly normal um, Reynolds 501, solid, beautifully built and heavy, the group set is predominantly DX, which is also fairly unremarkable, but very good quality. Um, but the really special stuff, I suppose, obviously a lovely suede turbo, um, the XC Pro brake levers that I've had since they were new, which I've talked about before. And perhaps most interestingly, and this is the first piece of 80s technology, this bit of proto suspension. Now, the Gerbin flex stem here actually dates to more like 1990 or 91, but this was developed in the 80s under the off-road brand. Uh, and this is the same, albeit um, a slightly newer model. Um, now, obviously the earliest suspension forks like the RockShox RS1 were being developed in the 80s, but you'd have to be super rich or a pro to actually be able to get your hands on them. So to us schoolboys, the only way you were going to get suspension was with one of these. Now this bike is predominantly an ornament nowadays in my meeting room at work, but um, in its day, this flex stem did actually work quite hard. It took a real beating when I was a kid, um, as evidenced by the fact that it's now slightly crooked. You can see that the handlebars are kinked down to the right because the actual um, barrel of the stem is slightly bent. That's not, it doesn't really affect it that badly. Uh, in terms of suspension action, you can see there, you get about, now, 10 millimeters of travel there uh, and probably more from the tires so it's not really much more than just a shock absorber to get the worst of the um, trail buzz out of your wrists but you know we talked about it in the day being absolutely revolutionary it's a really simple piece of kit you've just got this this great big piece of billet aluminium cnc machine that goes down into the um into the quill um, with a pivot here and this pivot is, is still really nice and, and free after 30 odd years um, and then you've got an elastomer which you can see there this is the red one they came in different colors from black through I think red and blue and green depending on hardness this is a sort of medium one um, amazingly this is the original red one obviously I don't know how it survived so long because a lot of them from this era have turned to glue um, they're not of course easy to find nowadays I'm, I'm pretty sure the Gervin company isn't still making them if indeed it still exists however you can use um, skateboard truck bushings and of course here in the big city there are skate shops everywhere so these things are sustainable and people are still using them mainly for fashion value because they look cool and nostalgic but they do have um, a certain effectiveness. Another thing that really dates it to the 80s is this integrated uh, cable hanger for cantilever brakes which were of course being phased out by the mid 90s um, but that's a really nice bit of bit of technology and uh, underneath it there is a top out bumper now I that one did turn to glue over the years and I had to scrape it out and replace it with just a disc of rubber which I carved shape and bolted in um, and that basically stops it from rebounding with a thunk um, after its compression so this thing still works really nicely it doesn't squeak it doesn't creak it just takes the worst of the buzz off the trail now the second piece of mind-bending futuristic technology from the space age that we're going to talk about is seat posts this seat post is i don't even know where it came from i will have got it from a bike jumble goodness knows what age it is but it uh, it fits and that's all that matters and also it's pretty um, the piece of technology that we're all using nowadays, every contemporary mountain biker here in 2021, will be using a dropper post. Um, the one I use on my modern mountain bike is a KS Lev Integra. It's beautiful, it works really well, it's light, everything's internalized so it doesn't get dirt to it. Hydraulic action with a remote release made by Wolftooth. Um, anyway, that thing obviously would have been invented sometime in the 2010s, um, but what very few people know is the dropper seat post was actually invented in the 80s. And before you all spit at me with indignation for my stupidity, allow me to demonstrate. 
So here's the converter kit, still in its packaging from uh, 1986, this one dates back to, but it was developed even earlier by Breeze and Angel, uh, and it's called the Heightrite. It's basically a spring. I'm going to fit it on this lovely rally and you'll see how it works. Um, the idea, of course, it was the same as the idea behind the modern dropper post, which is you can, whilst you're riding along, drop your saddle out the way so you can tackle technical terrain. And then with one flick of a switch, it bounces back up to the optimum position for maximum pedaling efficiency. Now the one remaining thing that this kit needs, of course, is a quick release so that you can flick the thing open and close whilst riding along. And thankfully, I've got one I prepared earlier. One of the most satisfying workshop tasks. If it's steel and it'll fit and it's looking a little tired, then into the vinegar it goes. 24 hours in there and we'll see nature work her magic. And here's the morning after. I really love details like this. This thing's 33 years old. It came on a ultra low budget gas pipe Peugeot from 1988 um, and it was rusty and rough as you saw. And now look at it, it's absolutely made my day. Now in practice, there are relatively few of my vintage mountain bike collection that I'd actually be prepared to use a hike right on. Um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, the, the clamp tightness between the seat tube and the seat post um, on a lot of bikes is quite tight, which means even when you do open the quick release, the thing doesn't just drop down. You need to really wiggle it to get it up and down. So that's not gonna work. Um, and on some of my other bikes, the situation is that I've either got a really beautiful satin finished um, vintage seat post or a black anodized one that I wouldn't want to scratch. So again, those are out. This, however, is perfect. If I replace this bolt with a quick release and open and close it, the thing slides up and down really nicely and will do even better when I've greased it. So this is a perfect candidate for height right. This is about the most use this meeting room table's seen throughout lockdown. So I'm glad to be getting my money's worth at last. any of my clients rocks up to a meeting and asks why there's copper grease on the table, only you and I know why. Okay, unboxing, something that's been packaged for this many decades. I feel like I'm gonna unleash some Pharaoh's curse, but in we go. I've never fitted one of these before. Believe it or not, they were just slightly too expensive for me as a kid even an original decal, which matches the color scheme of the bike, so that's going on. Right, thankfully there are instructions. Right, as soon as I got the thing unpacked, I encountered my first problem, which is that this rather lovely quick release that I spent so long restoring does not fit through the hole here. Now, none of the rather primitive tools I have here in the store cupboard at work um, is strong enough to bend this thing out because it's really thick and hard metal. Um, so I'm either gonna have to find another quick release that's got a thinner bolt, or I'm gonna go home, take the whole thing into the workshop and get the big tools out. All right, we're back on. Um, at home in the workshop in my archive, of course I had the correct part, which is this Calloy seat quick release, and you can see it's got a slightly narrower gauge bolt than the one that I spent all that time restoring. So this will allow me to fit the height right. They say this also doubles as an anti-theft device and they're not kidding. I think you'd need a PhD to nick this saddle and seat post once it's installed. There we go, a dropper post from the olden days. No hydraulics, no handlebar mount shifter, just some good old fashioned caveman technology. Let's give this thing a test. <laughs> 